Well, I figured I feel pretty cold right now, so I just brought my demonstration pieces of trees, hi, right on in. And I've got some supplies to show you this. So what we're doing today is... Heaven with staghorn sumac. That's what we're looking at here. So staghorn sumac is Rus Tythena and Tree of Heaven is well, how do you say that? Ailanthus Altissima. Okay, and this should be a really fun video, honestly. I've got a couple of tricks up my sleeve. This is going to be fun, especially. So, mm, my cat wants to help. Come here, buddy. This is Randall. And he's a good little fluff. Maybe I can angle this up a bit more so that you can actually see me in the frame a little bit. Hi there. So, welcome to my living room. I have a handful of staghorn sumac and a handful of invasive tree of heaven, which is also the primary host plant for the spotted lanternfly, which is causing devastation in forests. Not only is it outcompeting a lot of plants, but it's causing absolute devastation. So something I've found is that the only thing that you can find in most articles is look for the seeds, look for the seeds. That's really the only difference that they really advertise much of if you're going looking for um, answers about whether or not you have a sumac or a tree of heaven. Now, I grew up calling tree of heaven a sumac tree. We're going to have lots of help from the kitty today. You cannot snuggle that. I'm sorry. You can snuggle me, but not the camera. Um, and that is partially a southwestern PA thing. It's partially just my grandfather is from a family that's been here a really long time, like early 1700s in the Pittsburgh region. So, he had some interesting common names for things, and Calling Tree of Heaven Sumac was one of them. And I grew up thinking sumac was a really stinky tree. That's your first indicator, is if it smells bad, you've either got a black walnut, or you have a Tree of Heaven probably. Uh, the leaves are the type that have a stem going down the middle and then a bunch of leaves coming off of it. And they leave these big scars when they fall off. You can see the big scars. Now, I want you to look at that, and then I want you to look at the big scars on staghorn sumac. They're different. You can see it real well. But if you want the chance to maybe not let a tree of heaven get mature enough to show you it can make seeds, then knowing this difference is important because this is the early wood. This is also smooth and speckled, whereas this is fuzzy. Can you tell? very fuzzy. So, I also took a cross cutting of the first year wood so that you can see the pith. This looks really similar. But again, this one's fuzzy, so it's sumac, and this one's smooth. The leaf scarring is real deep and wide. And if it smells bad and looks like this, it's 
tree of heaven. If it's fuzzy. So we may collect some additional because I also think I have one black walnut and I know I have one ash, young ash tree of some sort, some sort. Um, I think I identified it as black walnut. I also want you to see the difference in the bark. Sumac, tree of heaven. The sumac has banding that looks more horizontal. This did have some stag horn action, which I think is hilarious. The branch actually got rubbed by some sort of white-tailed deer and it took a lot off. I also was whittling on the other end, so that's that's a difference. And this one has more of like a warty uh, vertical. I feel like the bark on this one looks more kitten, looks closer to um, like a cherry tree as far as its patterning. And this one doesn't look like a cherry tree at all. It's warty. And the color stripes, like, the different colors go up and down. Here comes the cat again. <laughs> oh, God. You're no help, kitten. So, the part that I'm really excited to show you, and the way that I was able to absolutely positively identify, is we have a black light here. Let's see if it can show. What it does is it picks up green. And I can go ahead and turn off the light and get this more subtly. Hold on a moment. Let me hit the light switch. It's dark. I'm sorry it's dark. I'm not sure how well that's actually going to show up. So center's really, really green. Hmm. Sorry. It's crazy looking. In real life, it's absolutely insane looking. There you go. You get how that's like green, right? trying to put a lot of distance between the black light and its target. You'd be laughing if you saw the position I'm in. It's just such a bright, vivid, black light reactive, like crazy yellow green. And it doesn't happen with the, um, this is again the tree of heaven wood at all. So, let's see if we can get the side of it to glow for you at all, because I was whittling that. There! You see how yellow that is? Right down the middle, the heartwood, not the pith, but the heartwood is a really reactive lime green under black light. So that's a fun thing to be able to use a black light to identify wood. And that is a stable reaction. There are a few plants that do this. Black locust is another one, uh, which I think is fun. I'm going to carry this down the way to the scrap lumber down the way and play around with it there. So I think what I'm going to do real quick here is... Go ahead and uh, turn the light back on to wrap this up. Because it's dark in here. Or at least mostly dark. Um, so again, this handful is all fuzzy stuff. 
with almost like a tan version of cherry wood type of bark. And that staghorn sumac was just whittling this today, no scent. And these smooth, thicker leaf scars, the one I just cut today is stinky. Um, this is the invasive tree of heaven that smells terrible and is the host for the spotted lantern fly, which digs holes in a, in a lot of trees and kills them. So not something you want. Um, I have one of these, I have a few of these, um, but the one I can't get to is growing right on the edge of the cliff. Uh, right where, you know, like I'm terracing down, it gets a little steeper, and then there's that undercut rock face. It's growing out the edge of the rock face. And so I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do about that. But I have learned that some of the other ones that I thought were also Tree of Heaven, in an actual fact, are sumac, fun black light sensitive wood that doesn't have a scent hardly and produces berries that are a good spice that also um can be used to make like a pink lemonade type of drink uh it's it's like a native lemonade sumac aid if you want to look that up it's a pretty easy one to make and um, since the berries are what's edible, you just want to make sure that if you're doing sumac berries and they end up being like thick, clustered spikes of berries, um, that they're red and not white because the white ones are poison sumac and you don't want to eat that. But um, generally you will know if you have a poison sumac because those are the ones that grow in a swamp and the rest of them prefer a drier situation. So like a swamp or a bog is where you'll find a poison sumac. And they also aren't as winter hardy, so we're starting to see them up in zone six as we have climate creep, but we also don't see them much. So um, if it's on a dry, like beside a railroad, I see them all the time. Uh, it's actually the most common situation for me to see a, a sumac tree is in wasteland, like along a railroad and stuff like that. So I hope this was helpful. It, it is definitely something I've noticed is that identifying younger trees before they're too big to take care of, like that one that's down on the cliff, the trunk's like this big around and it's just sticking off the edge of the cliff like that. And I'm like, hmm, I don't know what I can do. Because, uh, you know, I could get close enough to do some loppers, but it's bigger than that now. So identifying things when they're younger hopefully is something that I can build a bit of a library on. And this one we have, Staghorn Sumerak versus Tree of Heaven. And I'm going to link the blog spot that's upside down. I'm going to link the blog spot that has a lot of pictures for you that are not just like winter trunks, but that shows some leaves too and adds a little bit of detail about um, what a black walnut would look like, which I also have on the cliff side. So, um, yeah, that's it for today. I hope you're having a really good weekend. Tomorrow's MLK and I have the day off and my kitten is healing up really well and figuring out how, how to use the e-collar. So that's great. Um, and that's not the one that was crawling all over me during half of this video. So take care. Thank you. Bye.